Old English Customs Extant at the Present Time An Account of Local Observances By Peter Hampson Ditchfield Introduction The Decay of Old Customs Causes of Their Decline Numerous Survivals Not Confined to the Country Pagan Origin Importance of Their Preservation The Calendar Many writers have mourned over the decay of our ancient customs, which the restlessness of modern life has effectually killed. New manners are ever pushing out the old, and the lover of antiquity may perhaps be pardoned if he prefers the more ancient modes. The death of the old social customs, which added such diversity to the lives of our forefathers, has not tended to promote a reign of happiness and contentment in our village communities, but rather to render rustic life one continuous round of labour, unrelieved by pleasant pastime. The causes of the decline and fall of many old customs are not far to seek. Agricultural depression has killed many. The deserted farmsteads no longer echo with the sounds of rural revelry. The cheerful log fires no longer glow in the farmer's kitchen. The harvest home song has died away, and largesse no longer rewards the mummers and morris dancers. When poverty stands at the door, mirth and merriment are afraid to enter. Moreover, the labourer himself has changed. He has lost his simplicity. His lot is far better than it was fifty years ago, and he no longer takes pleasure in the simple joys that delighted his ancestors in days of yore. Railways and cheap excursions have made him despise the old games and pastimes which once pleased his unenlightened soul. The old labourer has died and his successor is a very up-to-date person who reads the newspapers and has his ideas upon politics and social questions that would have startled his less cultivated sire. Again, the shriek of the engine has sounded the death note of many once popular festivals. The railway trains began to convey large crowds of noisy town folk to popular rural gatherings and converted the simple rustic feasts into pandemoniums of vice and drunken revelry. Hence the authorities were forced to interfere and to order the discontinuance of the festivals. Such has been the fate of such popular gatherings as the Langworthby Rounds, which once delighted the hearts of the Cumberland folk. In consequence of these causes, the decay of many old customs was inevitable. Nevertheless, they have not all died yet, and it is indeed surprising how many still linger on in the obscure corners of our native land where railroads and modern culture have not yet penetrated. We will endeavour to record the customs that still remain, the survivals of old-world rural life. We will visit the quaint and quiet streets of rural towns and villages, hear the rude rhymes of the mummers and souling children, and mark their fantastic dress and strange uncouth capers. Handed down from remote antiquity, these verses have been passed on from generation to generation and preserve the record of England's history writ in the memories of her children. Norse legends that came to our shores with the fierce Vikings, Saxon superstitions, Roman customs, Norman manners, pagan beliefs, pre-Reformation practices, Tudor triumphs, great events in history, the memory of mighty chiefs and infamous conspirators, are all preserved in our existing customs which time has spared. Popular customs contain the germ of history, and however rude and uncouth they may be, if we look beneath the surface we find curious and interesting stores of antiquarian lore which well repay the labour of the explorer. Nor are curious customs confined to the country. The court and the palace, the law courts, the church, parliament, military ceremonials, all present interesting features of customs and observances which time has consecrated and not destroyed. We shall notice many strange tenures of property, curious bequests which perpetuate the eccentricity of the benefactors, certain manorial customs which have been termed jocular, some municipal customs which certainly have their humorous side, and all the odd and fantastic observances which may be witnessed in the streets of our country towns, as well as in the homes of our villagers. In pagan institutions we must ground many old customs and rites, which, travelling to us through an infinite succession of years, have been sadly distorted and disfigured in their progress. 
old paganism died hard and fought long and stubbornly in its struggle with Christianity. How often do we find the incorporation of some ancient cult and pagan custom in many observances sanctioned by years of Christian practice? The hot cross buns on Good Friday, the bonfires on St John's Eve, relics of old Baal worship, the hanging of mistletoe, the bringing in of the Yule log and countless other customs, many of which still survive, are the results of the compromise. The Christian teachers found the people so wedded to their old rites and usages that it was vain to hope for the complete abandonment of their long-cherished practices. Hence the old pagan customs were shorn of their idolatry and transferred to the Christian festivals. Nor is it uncommon to find survivals of old forms of nature worship, of various cults of hero or demigod, of proprietary offerings to the spirits of the woods and streams, just as we find the old Norse legends of Loki and Heimdall and Sigyn on the Saxon crosses at Gosforth, blended with the triumphs of Christianity over the prostrate pagan deities. Sometimes local customs owe their origin to the popular will in some places and have become part of the local law. In some cases we find that a particular custom, which seems strange and remarkable, is but a variation of some well-ascertained folk custom which once extended over a wide area. Other popular customs are only observed in one particular place and owe their origin to some ascertained historical event. They are frequently very extraordinary and cause us to wonder how the wit of man ever invented such strange modes of expressing its ideas and feelings. We wonder, too, how they could have been preserved so long amid the many changes of our social life. We have festival customs, ceremonial customs and sports and games to which English folk have ever clung with fond affection. The Church has preserved for us many of our festival customs, ceremonial customs have been guarded by local enactments and become connected with all the chief events in human life. Hence we have a mass of customs associated with all our social institutions which will repay our careful examination and close scrutiny. Existing superstitions, as shown forth by examples of amazing credulity, will find no place in these pages. We must leave to others to record the cases of modern witchcraft, fortune-telling, planet-ruling and such wonder-working powers startling to the philosopher of the 19th century who believed that all superstitions had been killed by modern culture and enlightenment. We seek only the ancient customs which survive in town or hamlet, in church or court, where, if our readers will bear us company, we can show to them the strange performance and wild, rude ceremony, and try to discover the origin and meaning of that which we behold. One request I fain would utter. Villagers are most worthy townsfolk of England. We know that old customs are dying fast, that old practices are falling into disuse. Let them not die, I would beseech you, at least not before these pages are written, lest our good friends whom I shall venture to bring with me to visit you should go away disappointed and lest hereafter you should mourn the loss of those things which now appear to your enlightened minds of little value or interest. Most of the local time-honoured customs of Old England are connected with the church's calendar. The church always was the centre of the life of the old village, and the social amusements and holiday observances were associated with the principal feasts and festivals of the church. Fairs are still held in most places on the festival of the saint to whom the parish church is dedicated. Christmas, Easter, Ascension Day, Whitsuntide still bring with them their accustomed modes of popular celebration. We propose to follow the course that the calendar lays down for us and notice all the remarkable observances which have long ago been incorporated in old English life and as innocent associations of a simpler, perhaps a happier time, it would be a pity if ever they were allowed altogether to disappear.